Hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's video on installing software AG Web Methods API Gateway using Docker. Now, if you have seen my previous videos on the overall introduction and architecture of software AG Web Methods integration capabilities, this would have given you a perspective of how the API Gateway comes into the picture. Uh, there is a link to subscribing for the video as well as you can access the video. Let's get into this video for now. The topics that we will cover today to understand how the installation progresses are as follows. The first step would be to configure a few Docker settings. The second step would be to sign up for Web Methods API Gateway trial license. Uh, by signing up for the API Gateway trial license, you get a 90 day uh, full version of the product. Uh, you could subscribe again for the license after the 90 days and still continue to play around with the product. The third step is to actually download the binaries of the API Gateway. Uh, this is done using Docker itself. Fourth step is to actually install and run the API Gateway. Finally, we access the API Gateway and uh, log in into the Gateway to see the application up and running. So there are a few prerequisites to actually follow this video and be able to have the API Gateway up and running. The first one is to make sure that you have an installed and running Docker. Um, if you were using Windows, you could check the status of your Docker by doing a Docker minus V or a Docker info. Alternatively, in the uh, taskbar, you could see the uh, Docker instance running in a green color. And the second prerequisite is to have a valid username and password that you could uh, access the docker.com website. This is actually needed to subscribe for the license. You can do a free registration on the website at any point in time. So you could just access the hub.docker.com and sign up for an account. These are the only two prerequisites that you need to actually set up and install the API Gateway. The next step is, uh, it differs on how you do it on a Mac or on Windows. Uh, my demonstration is on a Windows machine. Uh, so what you actually need to do is increase the default memory of Docker after it's installed uh, to 6 GB. Uh, this can be done quite easily nowadays from the Docker desktop option where you could just access Docker desktop, go to the sources and just slide the bar to 6 GB. Uh, it would be great if you can increase it to 8 GB as well, but 6 GB would work fine with uh, the API gateway. Now there's an alternate way where you could go directly to Hyper-V and um, access the memory panel and increase the RAM to 6 GB. Both of these options are possible. Whatever suits you and is convenient, you can use either of them. The next step is actually to sign up for the Web Methods API Gateway license. This can be done by accessing the hub.docker.com website. After that, you can access the repository for the Software AG API Gateway. Once you have accessed it, you can click on proceed to checkout. Uh, there is a form that is used to fill out some personal details of the person subscribing. Once you fill out the form and you have completed uh, the action, it navigates to you, uh, navigates you to a page where you have instructions on how to pull the image and use the uh, software. Uh, the next step is actually to download the API Gateway. You can open a command prompt and start off by keying in the command docker login. Now this is important because without actually logging in 
you wouldn't be able to subscribe or access your API gateway that you have just completed in the previous step. Subsequently, you would actually key in the next command called docker pull and this actually pulls the image of the docker um, of the API gateway. The image size is 1.9 GB and you will have to wait uh, quite some time based on the bandwidth of your internet. Uh, you will have to wait patiently and once the download is completed you would see a screen uh, as the below. The final step is actually to install and run the API gateway. The command to execute is a docker run which actually exposes two ports that's the Tetra 5 and the 9072 port. You are downloading the API gateway trial license that you had just subscribed for. Once you execute the docker run command, you can see an I, a UUID which represents the running instance. Finally, access the API gateway home page at this endpoint. You would get a login page and once you enter the credentials for the login page which is administrator and manage you would be able to finally log into the api gateway all right now let's look at each step on how to access the application now look at each step that we have gone through in the previous slides. The first step is actually to log in to the Docker using the credentials you have. As soon as I give Docker login, uh, you would be challenged with your username and password. If you're already logged in, it would uh, just successfully log into the application. And uh, once you gain access to your Docker uh, command prompt, uh, here on you can now download the package and install and run the api gateway so the next step is to download the image uh, i'm going to give the command docker api gateway and uh, try to pull the image As you can see, in my case, the image is already available. Uh, I could try that again and it would still say that the image is available. Now, if I were to say docker ps docker image You can see I already have the API gateway uh, and it is 1.91 GB. Now, what I'm actually going to do is uh, try and remove the image and uh, this will let me show you how that the download is going to look like. So Docker image remove and I remove this image. As you can see, there are uh, lots of layers and it, it really is a huge uh, download. What I'm going to now attempt is try and download the package once more just to show you how the experience is. Now, this is going to take uh, a really long time because uh, it's around 1.9 GB. So I'm going to fast forward this video and uh, join back when the download is completed.
So we are almost completing with the download. I will give it a couple more seconds and make sure that the download is done. So the stage docker has already uh, downloaded the images and it's extracting and this part should complete quite quickly. So as you can see, all the layers are being uh, extracted and the image is going to be ready for uh, execution. So with that, the image has been downloaded and it is ready. Now, if you were to try to pull the image again, uh, it would just say that the image is available. So the first download is only going to take time. After that, it's just going to check if there's a new image uh, and let you know. So now the last step is to actually uh, run the instance. And for that, I'm going to use the Docker run uh, minus D and uh, the ports uh, Tetra 5 and 9072 are being exposed. The Tetra 5 port uh, will be the port where the integration server will be running and the 9072 port is where the API gateway is going to be exposed. Now you would see that the instance has uh, picked up uh, and has executed quite quickly. However, it, it takes a couple of minutes for the service to be up and running. So uh, let's just wait a couple more seconds for it to be up. Now in the new version of Docker, you can actually um, go right into the, uh, you could go directly into the logs and see what's actually happening. So let's just click on this. And you can see over here, the logs are actually getting rendered for the API gateway. And you can see it's still uh, spinning up. So the port, you could check in the logs uh, if it is available, so it's still not there. Let's give it a couple more minutes and uh, it should come up. But as you can see, we have just got the API gateway all set and ready by just one command. You can see on port uh, Tetra 5, the integration server is up and uh, 907 would be the port for the API gateway. So now we have the API gateway running. Now you have two ways of accessing the gateway. Either you, you could go directly to the integration server or by accessing the port uh, Tetra 5. Uh, the credentials would be administrator and manage. M-A-N-E-G, and that's all in lowercase. The username is administrator, capital A, and the password is manage uh, in lowercase. So this takes you directly to integration server. As you can see, this is web methods integration server. Now, if you navigate to the solutions, you can see that there is an API gateway over here. So, so, so the API gateway is actually packaged within the integration server, and integration server is the runtime for the gateway. So if you would click on the API gateway, it will redirect you to the login page and I'm automatically logged in. So I can log out from here and show you the login page of the gateway. So this is the login page of the gateway. You could do administrator again. as the password so like I said you could directly come to localhost 907 to API gateway and just try to log in over here and uh, when you give login you are now in the gateway as you can see this is very much the full-blown gateway and uh, you have the capabilities of directly adding API's or importing API's over here in one of the next videos, uh, I'll demonstrate on how uh, an API can be imported over here. But right now, uh, this will allow you to actually quickly spin up an API gateway uh, on your laptop. And from here onwards, you can uh, play around with the API.
So hope all of you had a good understanding on how the installation of the API gateway is uh, performed using Docker. As you can see, the significant benefits of uh, installing the gateway using Docker. Uh, you don't have to get involved in uh, installing each and every components uh, independently. With Docker, you can just directly download the image and with a simple run command, you have the gateway up and running. Hope this video has been beneficial for you. If you'd like to know more about uh, Web Methods uh, integration capabilities, uh, please uh, click on the subscribe button or uh, put in some comments and I can get back to you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.